This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream, home to over 2,500 documentaries and nonfiction titles for curious minds. This here is Merida, the main character from the Pixar movie Brave. I saw this character, or really the process that made her, in a completely different way after I visited the Los Angeles Pixar exhibit a few years back, which shows some of the behind the scenes in regards to Pixar and Disney movies. What I remembered more than anything else I saw there was how they animated her hair. Now, animators can animate everything. If she's riding a horse, they can, by hand, tell her hair to move however they want. But that's complicated. Instead, in this movie, they programmed in the laws of physics and just had her hair move accordingly. What they started with was a spring system. Each hair was modeled as a spring. When you pull a spring, just like curly hair, it stretches, but then curls back upon release. This still led to some issues, and Khan Academy actually covered exactly this topic, where you can see, for example, moving at high speeds could cause the springs or hair to not maintain their curl, which was an issue. But when they increased the spring constant to hold the structure, the hair wouldn't bounce normally when motion was applied. So what they did was took the springs, or really her hair, and attached some core springs internally, kind of like dampers that would not be physically seen on screen, but the physics would still apply to the overall system. What this did was made it so really abrupt forces would not cause as much movement in the hair, and this led to a more natural look on screen. This is just one example of the hardships that animators face at a company like Pixar. Hank being their most complex character to date was difficult to get to move properly, and it took about two years to complete. The water in Moana proved difficult, and another huge aspect is getting light just right. In the movie Cars, they had to figure out new rendering techniques to get the shininess of the cars just how they wanted. And in Monsters University, they had to figure out some more advanced techniques. How they create light and shadows also comes from programming in the laws of physics, as well as some advanced math, but I'm going to talk about that in more detail in a follow-up video. Here I'm going to switch to a totally new subject. Yes, a lot of random stuff in this video. So here's a question. What do you get when you have 17 middle-aged people doing Tai Bo to the song The Power? This was an interesting story out of South Korea in 2011. People on the top floors of this 39-story building felt pretty extreme shaking that lasted 10 minutes, which led to everyone being evacuated. There was no sign of an earthquake or anything like that, so researchers weren't sure why this had happened. After further analysis, they found it was due to people exercising on the 12th floor of the building. This is one of many examples that engineering or physics students might learn about when they're first introduced to resonance, where even a small disturbance, like people exercising, can cause huge disturbances if the driving force happens at just the right frequency. See, as a simple example, a mass spring system has a natural frequency, the rate of oscillation that occurs regardless of how much you stretch the spring. But if you start to apply a force that just matches that frequency, even if it's small, the force can build on that motion, causing much more extreme stretching. This is basically what happened in South Korea. The small forces of people exercising kept amplifying or building on the already made vibrations and it left people on the top floor really feeling those effects. Engineers have to account for this when building structures since it doesn't take much force to cause these issues. Here's a video of the Millennium Bridge wobbling more than it should due to the motion and distribution of the people on the bridge. They fixed the issue by installing dampers all along the bridge to reduce the vibrations, which is also something buildings have done as well. There were no deaths or anything in either of these examples, but resonance can lead to structural collapse, as was apparent with the Tacoma Bridge, which collapsed due to wind that matched the natural frequency of the bridge itself. But it's not just natural frequencies that people need to think about in regards to the structure of a building. In the summer of 2010, guests at a Las Vegas hotel who were hanging out by the pool complained about having their skin burned by pretty extreme temperatures. After extensive research, they found the problem was the sun over the desert in the summer. No, I'm sort of kidding. There was a secondary reason, because this was at the Vidara Hotel, which has a curved surface, and that was concentrating light onto the poolside area. 
See, any parabola, no matter what it looks like, has a focus point, a point where any incoming parallel lines will reflect to. If that parabola is a wall, then incoming objects would ideally reflect all to the same point. Or if the surface were a mirror slash window, then incoming light would all focus to that one single point. This is why, for example, antennas have this parabolic shape, to reflect all incoming signals to the one receiver. So this is essentially what happened. That reflection was causing temperatures to go up by around 10 degrees Celsius at the hot spot, which would change as the sun moved throughout the sky. This was named the death ray of the hotel, but since then, overhead protection has been put into place, as well as non-reflective film put over the windows. And the same phenomenon occurred in London in 2013, which Matt Parker did a video on. Apparently, nearby cars were partially melting, for example, and paint was peeling off. There was even one instance where... Someone unexpectedly scorched their lemon. And that's not even a euphemism. But overall, this was due to the concave design of the building that would concentrate light onto the street below. Yeah, there's a lot that has to be taken into account when making buildings or bridges and so on. So those were just a few examples that I didn't have anywhere else to put. But even though I'm keeping this video shorter, if you want to keep learning about the world around us and possibly some hidden math slash physics, you can do so over at Curiosity Stream, this video sponsor. Their Dream the Future series is one I definitely recommend to those who enjoy engineering, technology, and innovation. This includes a look into several futuristic realities like cities of the future, transportation of the future, homes of the future, and much more. You'll explore what role augmented reality devices will play in our lives. You'll see how important digital technology will be to sustaining our cities, and just what everyday lives could look like in the decades to come. But it's not just this, as Curiosity Stream hosts thousands of documentaries in categories such as physics, space, crime and forensics, history, and plenty more. Normally their pricing comes out to just $2.99 per month, but with the current stay-at-home measures in place, CuriosityStream is offering an additional 40% off their annual plan. So if you're watching this before the quarantine is removed, then by signing up now with the link below and using the promo code ZACKSTAR, you'll get a full year's worth of CuriosityStream at a rate of just a dollar per month. This gives you unlimited access to top documentaries and nonfiction series that I know many of you will enjoy. And with that, I'm going to end that video there. Thanks as always to my supporters on Patreon, Social media links to follow me are down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.